we need to have lots of renewable energies because even with all energy efficiency, we still need uh, usable energy. We have to develop the grid so that we can take care for the new ways of, store, of distributing uh, energy. And of course, the sun doesn't shine at night and the wind doesn't blow all the time. We need energy storage systems. And of course, and this is of course our key topic today, we need sustainable mobility. In sun rich countries, we are already below five cents per kilowatt hour. These are dollar, these are euro cents, but as you know, the euro has lost so much value that it's almost the same. As <laughs> make it make life easier. But the most important, the most important message is we are looking forward to create electricity for two to four cents a kilowatt hour. Compared to this, you can forget everything else, especially nuclear power plants, and you can even forget the quest to try to tame nuclear fusion on Earth. Because even the most optimistic people working on nuclear fusion say five cents per kilowatt hour is well what it will bring. So we will be far below this uh, in a relatively short time. We have worldwide 177 gigawatt installed. So actually, PV is where automotive sector was in maybe 1920 or so. Just at the very beginning, the biggest growth is still ahead, and therefore this is such an exciting technology. And this is, I see, why we are having a standing room audience here in our opening session. Looking back at what happened with batteries over the last you know, almost a century is an interesting way to understand how Tesla got started and why something has changed. Lead acid was basically the status quo for batteries for 100 years. It's going to, from nickel metal hydride and lead acid to lithium ion, suddenly we could jump you know, almost 100% in improvement in energy density. And this was the turning point that, that really created you know, a new market for electric vehicles. You know, suddenly an electric vehicle wasn't a golf cart, it was something that was fun to drive, that it, it could handle because the battery pack didn't weigh 1,500 pounds. It created a vehicle that sort of surprised the automotive industry and I think launched a huge amount of other interesting and great electric vehicle programs all around the world. Even with the relatively small fleet of cars that Tesla has in the world today, about 60 odd thousand cars around the world, you know, this adds up to a lot of energy storage. It's about five gigawatt hours of total energy storage in that fleet of cars. And with all of this focus on battery cost, all of this focus on connectivity and how do we you know, manage the charging times of cars and, and their interface to the grid, it was somewhat natural for us to think about expanding our products into the grid market. And it also helps enable the synergy between photovoltaics or wind or renewables in general and cars. Because at our fundamental goal is, is how do we get sustainability into transportation? You know, we don't want to just make cars electric. We need to link electric cars all the way back to where the energy comes from. It has to be renewable energy to really make the difference that we want to do. I think we're at the beginning of a new cross decline curve, and you know, this is something where there's a lot of similarities to what happened with photovoltaics. Almost no one today would predict that photovoltaic prices would have dropped as fast as they have, and storage is right at the, the cliff heading, heading down that price curve. It's soon going to be cheaper to drive a car on, on electricity, a pure EV on electricity, than it is to drive a gasoline car. And as soon as we see that kind of shift in the actual cost of operation in a car that you can use for your daily driver, you know, from all manufacturers, I believe we're going to see electric vehicles come to dominate the whole transportation fleet. Also, that same battery cost decrease is going to drive batteries into the grid. There's going to be a much faster growth of grid energy storage than I think most people expected. You suddenly get to have you know, energy that's 100% firm and buffered from photovoltaics that's cheaper than fossil energy. And you know, we're, we're within sort of grasping distance of that goal, which is very, very exciting. Because once we get to that, and you know, there, there really is no going back. You know, it'll make sense to do this economically without any environmental consideration whatsoever. So that's the, the, the amazing tipping point that's going to happen within I'm quite certain the next 10 years. So that's why I think it's such an exciting time to be in this industry and in this space. Since the last time we sat here uh, 12 months ago, um, we've installed uh, three gigawatts of solar in the state of California. That's just in the last three months. It's tremendous growth. <laughs> About 25% of our energy comes from water. And by that, I mean in-state hydroelectric dams. Well, those dams are about half capacity at best right now, which means the electrical output is down 20 to 50% per dam. The reason why the electricity hasn't 
gone out. The reason why the lights have not gone out is in large part because of three, these three gigawatts that we've put in in the past 12 months. About 50% of the shortfall from our, this massive shortfall from hydroelectric output has been met with solar. So we are the unsung heroes of keeping the lights on during this catastrophic drought that California is uh, experiencing and something that we should all acknowledge and make public. We now employ more people, and this comes to us thanks to the Solar Foundation's excellent work, more people than all of the five largest utilities in California combined. That's all of our investor-owned utilities plus LEDWP and uh, SMUD. So it's a significant resource. The good news is the electorate is going solar. Every three minutes in the state of California, somebody's going solar. That's every three minutes, a new advocate, a new voter, a new voice calling for the clean energy future that we all here in this room stand ready to build. Link arms, work together, we can win. Join your local solar association. The most important thing is you just get active and involved and we can win. New York's speed of growth, uh, solar growth has increased 300%. 300%, twice the rate of increase of the rest of the country. And in 2014, New York had more than 350 megawatts of solar installed. In 2015, we currently have more than 304 more megawatts under contract and almost 70 more megawatts awaiting contract. We announced that $1 billion in the New York Sun program, which is an ambitious goal of three gigawatts of new solar PV installation over the next 10 years. And, and very, very, very proud of that. large utility scale pro, um, projects is where I think the, the future of your industry is going. And so I'm certainly looking for uh, opportunities to partner with all the people in this room on large scale renewables. But there's lots, I think, of opportunity for all of us to work together um, legislatively to, in fact, create a, a regulatory environment that's favorable and that creates a dynamic where we level the playing field for, for all types of energy companies. And as you leave here, remember to continue to walk face to sun. God bless.